Most of us have that friend who always seems unshakably confident, fitting the mold of what modern society deems as self-assured. They move with an air of certainty, as if they were naturally imbued with this trait from birth. But when we dive into the depths of Stoic philosophy, we're presented with a nuanced, profound understanding of confidence. What do the Stoics consider to be true? Confidence. Let's unravel this together in today's video. Confidence, a term so often thrown around, has roots that delve deep into our psyche. It's not a veneer we put on for show, but rather it's intrinsic to our being. And if there's a group who truly grasped the essence of confidence, it was the Stoics. The Stoics' approach to confidence was also deeply interconnected with their understanding of the cosmos. They belie that everything is interwoven in a predetermined order, a concept known as fate. This understanding, rather than leading to resignation, fueled their confidence. If everything is preordained, then our role is not to resist, but to understand and work in harmony with this natural order. Confidence to the Stoics was not about exuding charisma or displaying dominance. It was a quiet assurance rooted in the understanding of oneself and the natural order of things. Take, for example, Epicus, born a slave. He later became one of the most renowned Stoic philosophers. Despite facing life's adversities, he held an unwavering belief in his own reasoning abilities. Epicus did not allow his external circumstances to dictate his internal state. Instead, he derived confidence from within, from an understanding that our reactions, not our situations, define us. Another vivid embodiment of Stoic confidence is Seneca. His life was not without controversy or challenge, having faced exile and later forced to end his life. Yet his writings indicate a man who was deeply secure in his beliefs when faced with exile, instead of wallowing in despair. Seneca used the time to write and study. He saw every challenge as an opportunity for reflection and growth. Seneca's letters to his friend Lylas are a testament to this. He wrote about the impermanence of life, the folly of chasing fame, and the importance of self-awareness. Each letter, in its own way, was a lesson on how to live with confidence amidst uncertainty. You might wonder, how did the Stoics achieve such unwavering confidence well? Well, they began by understanding that confidence is not about having all the answers, but about being okay with not knowing. It's about understanding that life, with all its unpredictability, is out of our control. What remains within our control however, is our response to it. In their quest for understanding, confidence, the Stoics also frequently contemplated death. It may seem counterintuitive, but this, this memento mori, a reflection on mortality, fortified their confidence by regularly reminding themselves of the fleeting nature of life. They became more courageous, making the most of each moment. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, faced wars, plagues and personal losses. Yet his personal notes, which we now know as meditations, offer a glimpse into the mind of a person who, despite the tumultuous world around him, remained composed and confident. He wrote, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength, as most of you already know, the Stoics held nature in high regard. They saw nature as a teacher, offering lessons in resilience, growth and change trees, for instance, stand tall, not because they actively resist the wind, but because they bend and sway with it, demonstrating flexibility and strength. Such observations were metaphors from which Stoics derived their brand of confidence. Emulating this Stoic confidence requires us to shift our perspective instead of viewing confidence as a trait that some possess and others lack. We should see it as is a muscle and like any muscle. It requires consistent practice and reflection to be strengthened. The Stoics did this through daily journaling, meditation and engagement in Socratic dialogue. Another lesson from the Stoics is the avoidance of external validation. While society often equates confidence with accolades and achievements, 
Stoics believed in internal validation. They understood that the search for external praise is endless and often leads to dissatisfaction. For Stoics, confidence came from living in accordance with nature and their own principles, Cryas, another pillar of Stoicism, is a case in point as head of the Stoic school. In Athens, he emphasized logic and ethics, urging students to derive confidence from knowledge and virtue. Rather than public opinion in doing so, he laid down the foundation for a Kant confidence that's both genuine and lasting. K, the younger, another prominent Stoic, often wore mismatched tunics in Rome, a place where fashion was a reflection of status. When questioned about his attire, he remarked that he wished to challenge societal norms and test his own sense of embarrassment. Through such deliberate actions, he sought to reinforce his confidence by adhering to his beliefs, irrespective of external judgments. You see, Stoic confidence was also about embracing vulnerability. Acknowledging and accepting one's vulnerabilities and imperfections is a testament to genuine confidence. It's a recognition that while we might not be perfect, we are genuine and authentic in our pursuits. Another essential aspect was the Stoics' attitude toward failure. They did not view failure as a reflection of their worth, but as an opportunity for growth. They believed that setbacks and challenges were natural parts of human existence and offered valuable lessons. For instance, when Zeno of the founder of Stoicism was shipwrecked and lost everything he didn't despair, Instead, he saw it as a fresh start, famously saying, Fortune has taken away my possessions, but she has given me Zeno this incident, led him to discover philosophy, thus birthing stoicism, confidence for the Stoics, was also about endurance. They often drew parallels between physical and mental endurance, just as athletes train their bodies to withstand physical challenges. Stoics trained their minds to withstand emotional and psychological challenges. They practiced mental exercises known as premeditatio malorum, the premeditation of evils. This involved reflecting on potential negative events, not to become pessimistic, but to prepare the mind to endure it against the shocks of life. The Stoics believed that by anticipating potential setbacks, they could face any adversity with calmness and confidence, digging deeper. Stoic writings frequently emphasize the impermanence of life. The idea that everything is in a state of flux understanding and accepting. This was seen as a source of confidence. Why? Because when one internalizes the transient nature of all things, including one's own life, one can focus on the present on action, aligned with virtue and on responding to life's challenges with equanimity. Now, on the community front, the Stoics also derived confidence from their community. They believed in the concept of cosmopolitanism, that all humans are citizens of the world. This interconnectedness meant that they weren't alone in their pursuits. They drew strength from the collective wisdom of humanity, leaning on the experiences of those who came before and those who walked alongside them. In this, they found a collective shared confidence, knowing that while the journey was individual, the path was well trodden. So how confident are you, imagine for a moment, that you're sitting with stoic philosophers at the Agora they loved, posing reflective questions. Here are three questions the stoics might have asked themselves to gauge their confidence do I derive my self-worth from within or from external validations? Can I comfortably face uncertainty, knowing I can't control everything but can control my response? Do I see challenges as obstacles or opportunities for growth? These are questions for you and I to reflect on reflecting on Stoic teachings. Let's remember that confidence is not about appearing infallible or unshakable, it's about possessing a deep understanding of oneself, accepting life's changes, and deriving strength from our principles and beliefs. Stoic confidence teaches us to be resilient, to embrace challenges, and to always seek growth. It's about recognizing that our worth is not determined by external circumstances, but by our internal beliefs and actions. 
Let's build a confidence that's not just skin deep, but emanates from the very core of our being. Remember in the words of Seneca, difficulties strengthen the mind as labor, does the body embrace challenges, accept imperfections, and find confidence in the journey of self-discovery and growth. Because after all, true confidence, like that of the Stoics, is not about standing tall in the face of applause, but about remaining unshaken in the midst of storms. You know, the beauty of Stoic philosophy is that it always sparks such thought-provoking conversations. I'm curious to hear your takeaways from our chat today. Drop a comment below sharing what resonated with you the most. And hey, if you found this enlightening, feel free to spread the wisdom by giving it a like and sharing with your friends. Let's keep this dialogue going, by the way. If you've journeyed with us this far into the discussion, it's clear you're genuinely interested. Why not dive a bit deeper? Consider joining our Telegram group for even more engaging conversations. Oh, and there's another video that's just about to pop up on your screen. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. Check it out.